Hello, everybody. My name is Rusty Mortis. I am the coordinator here at the Veteran Resource Station at Beautiful NKU. Um, I try to get on and do videos as I see a need, just some educational type quick hitters. And uh, a phone call I've been getting quite a bit recently is, hey, I just got out of service or I've been out for a while, but I have GI Bill benefits. So what do I do to start the process? So I just wanted to talk through that a little bit. We actually have a wonderful tool on our website. And so I'm just going to walk through it really fast. And of course, if you have any questions along the way, uh, you can always call us right here at NKU's Veterans Resource Station at 859-572-7867. That's 7867. And or you can email us at veteransresource at nku.edu. But it's always a great place to start is our website. So let me go ahead and share our screen here real quick and get you back. Now I need to find you guys again. All righty. Okay, so as you can see, you see our screen. I just started on the basic one. You go in, the easiest way to do this is to go veterans.nku.edu, and that's going to bring it up for you. And it should have came up automatically like that, but veterans.nku.edu. The other way you can do it is just to type in um, nku. Uh, nku.edu backslash veterans and that'll bring you up to the same place as well all right so once you get here you just click on future students go ahead and click on that there is a welcome video that's already established there but doesn't go in necessarily all the, the benefit information so if you click on benefits and steps to benefits so again veterans resource station future students Benefits information, steps to benefits, and that'll bring you over to the checklist. And it literally is kind of a step-by-step, -step, but you don't have to um, stay on one step without going to the next step. For instance, you don't have to complete a step, then move on to the next step. Just keep going down the list and keep working it as it makes sense. So the first one, obviously, is your active duty guard reservist, where the case may be. It's always great to start, start by talking to your education service officer or your counselor at your unit or your base because uh, they can talk you through the um, intimacies of your particular program. Navy's a little bit different than Air Force, Army Guard is a little bit different than Army Reserve, so on and so forth. But again, you can always reach out to us and give us a call, 859-572-7867 or email us at veteransresource at nku.edu. But again, um, if you have anything, just reach out to us. And we can also get contacted uh, for other resources if need be. So then it says uh, provide the following to their veteran resource station. It's going to ask you to bring your COE or certificate eligibility or your NOB, your notice of uh, benefits. And you can drop that off or you can again just email it to us and we'll be able to upload it to your system. Uh, that if, if you are receiving benefits, through the GI Bill, education VA benefits or tuition assistance, uh, either at the Guard or, uh, or at the Big A is what we call it, or the you know air tuition assistance for active duty folks. Um, that automatically will work for the DD-214. So if you're not using benefits or you're waiting on your benefits, and, but you want to go ahead and do some of the advantages of priority service, such as super priority registration, then you would need to send in or drop off your DD-214. We're located in University Center, room 131, Veteran Resource Center. All right, but then if you do not have your CEO certificate eligibility or your NOB, then you would go to step three, and that's apply for your benefits. So there's two ways that you can apply for your VA GI Bill benefits, and that's just simply go to va.gov, click on the link, and go to education on the left-hand side, apply for benefits, complete the application. And it takes about eight weeks. They come sooner than that, but six to eight weeks is pretty standard time. Again, you don't have to wait, go ahead and apply then move on to the next step and go ahead and apply for the university. So you don't have to wait for those benefits to come in, but you know, just let us know that they're in route. 
or you can go to e-benefits. And a lot of times, if you have an e-benefits account, uh, you can go in there and you can actually click and uh, print off that directly. So not everybody, it depends on when you got out and some other different things, but it's always worth an effort if you got an e-benefits account. Then, like I said, you just walk through the steps. So you wanna get admitted to NKU, so you go ahead and apply for that online. Transfer credits, um, everybody but the Air Force, right, uses a JST, so your Joint Service Transcript. Again, the link is right here. You go through it, fill it out, get it done, and it'll be shipped in and sent to the uh, advisors. Now, I do get a lot of questions about transcripts. Um, that goes through the whatever department that you're going to be in. Uh, you know, for instance, if you're going to informatics, it would go to informatics and they'll take a look at it and see what you qualify for. Certain ones should automatically qualify for different things. You might be some electives and some other things along those lines, but that's all going to be worked through your advisor. But we're going to, we're working on, um, won't say better process, maybe a streamlined process or uh, some, some additional things to help with that uh, JST and also with the CCAF, the Community College of the Air Force transcripts. So if you're Air Force, you have to request your CCAF. So, and it shows you how to do that right here. All right, then uh, everybody apply for financial aid. I cannot stress this enough. Please, please, please just go ahead and fill out your FAFSA. Go ahead and apply for your financial aid. It doesn't matter if you're getting full benefits and you're gonna have free school, whatever. Whatever You, you may qualify for additional things. Um, I had two cases. Uh, one of them fairly recently, they were one semester away from graduation and uh, they had a situation which created some debt from the school, um, not really their fault, well, you know, um, how, it, how it occurred and so on and so forth. But it's like, have you ever applied for FAFSA? And they're like, no, hurry up and apply for it. They were able to apply, received a Pell Grant um, basically educational money that can be used and they were able to take care of that bill and then move into the last semester and graduate here very shortly. So, um, but the, the, those scenarios happen all the time. No matter what, you, what kind of benefits you're getting, apply for FAFSA because you don't know what you're going to get. You don't have to accept anything, but there's a good chance that you're gonna get some additional benefits uh, that you can utilize your short tuition or just general college expenses, which is always an aid and a help. All right, then you go on if you need to, you may um, probably skip the placement test, but you can verify that. Most people are able to do that at this point in time. Go ahead and register and attend an orientation session. Uh, we are with COVID now starting to, on the decline, hopefully, please. Um, we're starting to build more into you know, one of uh, interpersonal orientations and uh, uh, so on and so forth. But uh, we were working to have a veteran specific one. So make sure when you're going through the missions application, you can put down that you're either active duty, military, uh, but you're affiliated somehow with military service. Um, it could be dependents using benefits. It could be um, National Guard getting TA, uh, Big A, right, active duty TA, or it could be guard TA, state-based uh, versus federal-based, DOD-based. So go ahead and put all that information in there. And uh, if, if you can't, for some reason, attend, and then we'll um, have videos and different things like that, that that will go out to you for part of that orientation piece. Um, but again, call us anytime you have any questions. Then go ahead and register for classes. Well, this is key. Once you register for those classes, then your next step is you have to do your semester benefit request. Now, again, it doesn't matter if you have your COE or your NOB. As long as you applied for it you, and you got your classes, you can go ahead and complete your semester benefit request. I'm not going to go into that right now. There's actually another training video that strictly goes into semester benefit request, but it's uh, an important step that you cannot forget. You have to do it every semester. And what it does, it notifies NKU school certifying official, the SCO, that you plan on using benefits for this, this semester that you're in. And therefore, it will start the process for them to get your, your additional benefits. If that's paying for tuition, if it's BAH, books, whatever you may qualify for. All right. Um, real quick, that we do have that priority of service with the super priority registration. Again, if you're getting education benefits uh, for through the VA, GI Bill benefits, um, we really don't need any additional documentation. But 
if you want to, uh, you want to make sure you get that in uh, so you qualify for that. Basically, what superiority registration means is you can register for classes a day before even priority registration. So you, you start even earlier. Uh, so keep that in mind. And it's a very important um, and it's a great benefit that we offer here. So once you go through and do that and complete your veteran benefit request or semester benefit request. If you're using Army Ignite, there's some additional steps that you will need to go through. And the only reason for that is because Army Ignite, as we all know, is uh, going through a rehaul. And so there's been some issues and things going through. So just to ensure that it's a smooth process. If you plan on using Army Ignite, the, and it's just Army Ignite at this time, uh, the rest of them are working fine. If you plan on using Army Ignite, send me an email, give me a call, let me know. So we can uh, kind of walk through it and monitor it and, and track it. So as of right now with Army Ignited, there are some tweaks and changes. And so it's always changing uh, based on uh, the updates and that things that are going on. So if you're using Army Ignited, give me a call, 859-572-7867, or stop by our office. We're at the University Center 131. All right, so pay tuition. Um, or sorry, I skipped the UCAP, but this is important to, to talk about the lending library because uh, there is a good opportunity that you might be able to pick up, especially at the freshman, sophomore level, even later, um, some of the books so you don't have to pay for them. And that's important because that book stipend, you can use it for other things, right? Um, like a computer if you need it or pens, paper, whatever the case may be. But uh, go to the Steely Library and check out the lending library. And then um, if you are on benefits, and that's any type of federal or DOD or state benefit for um, educational for military service, veteran service dependents, then you could get notifications about tuition and payments. Let me know, okay? Because a lot of those notifications are auto-generated. And if you are on those benefits, there's a good chance that the payment just hasn't been received yet and we just need to make sure that they're tracking you and that you're okay because once this payment comes through then if you're at 100 for tuition that will all come off if you're at 60 percent obviously only six percent of that tuition would come off and you would owe the additional 40 percent if you do fall in where you don't get 100 percent tuition and it's a percentage then we can work that out with student account services so you can go ahead and pay that up front also on the graduate side, because most of the classes are five weeks for the MBA, seven weeks for most graduate style courses, they traditionally will not get paid until um, that class may be over or just about over. And so we need to make sure we're working with student account services so it doesn't delay you for registering for your next classes. So again, the bottom line is if you're getting any type of DOD, that's tuition assistance, statewide tuition assistance, if you're receiving any type of VA, GI Bill educational assistance, that includes post 9-11, voc rehab, or veterans readiness and employment now, chapter 31, chapter 33, or chapter 35 with the dependents, or if it's even a transfer, 33T, the transfer of benefits. Work with us, work with student account services on the billing side of things, because it can be a little nerve wracking to get an email saying that you're gonna be dropped from classes, and which, shouldn't happen if we're just waiting on DOD, if we're waiting on VA, if we're waiting on the federal or state to pay, pay that. So we can work with you. We can work with the student account services and make sure that you're not dropped from classes and that the payment comes through and everything works out. Okay. So more to come. Um, hopefully we're, we'll have some more information on that, make it a little bit smoother here in the coming months. So again, the best place to go is to our website, um, Veterans Resource Station, Future Students, benefits information, steps to benefits, walk through the checklist, and that will get you set up so you, know, you are successful uh, to get into school. Now, once you're into school, come down and see us. You know, like I said, we have priority of service. That includes free printing. We always have coffee, um, snacks, um, lunches from Fuel, NKU. Um, uh, Like-minded folks you're hanging out with at At Ease Lounge, um, all kinds of good things. It's engagement. It's uh, any type of resource you may need. We probably have a direct connect either at the school level, local, state, or federal level. Hope to see you soon. Welcome to NORS Nation. NORS up for vets.